Darktable 4 got a new module in the Lighttable view called the Collection Filters module. What it is, how you'd use it, and why will be the subject of this video. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 119 of Understanding Darktable. So this new module, the Collection Filters module, basically allows you to, as the name suggests, filter whatever collection of images you are currently looking at. And it's important to understand that no, you don't have to have saved a collection in the Collections module. You can simply hit reset on the collections module so you're viewing every single image that you have in your library or your database and then use the collection filters module to filter on every image you've shot. But you can also use a saved collection from the collections module and then use the collection filters module to filter those images down and sort them according to whatever it is that you're looking for. So if we go over to the collections module, you'll see that I have saved collections for just about everything. In this instance, I've pulled up the photos from our New South Wales road trip from a month or two ago, and we will use the collection filters module to filter and sort that collection of images. So starting with the range rating, will we call this a tile? I don't know if these things have a name, these grey boxes. By default, the module has three of them, the range rating, the colour label, and then a search box tile slash whatever, whatever it is we're going to call it. I'm going to call it a tile just for consistency. Okay, so the range rating. This will allow you to sort your images or filter your images, if you like, by the rating. We start off with the reject flag. Now, I don't have any images in this particular collection of images that I've rejected simply because I've already been and done that when I got home from the trip. Now, frustratingly, you can't click on the reject button a second time to remove it. If you want to remove it, you click on the next icon, which is images that are not rated. So that essentially removes the reject flag. You then have stars one to five. So if you want to see one star images, click on the one star, two star, three star, etc., etc. You can also click and drag along here. So if you want to see everything from one star to three star, simply left click and drag across the one star to the three star icon. And now you're seeing all of the images that are rated one two or three stars. You can also right click on here to pull up a menu which allows you to quickly jump to other choices. But I do find this a little bit odd. According to this I have 13 images that are rated two star. So if I choose that option I should only be looking at two star images. But what I get is everything from two star to four star. So just be aware of that. There's some oddities about the way it behaves, but you know, you, you'll work it out. So now we'll move on to the color label tile. For this, I'm just going to clear the range rating for the moment. So you can click on a color to pull up images which have been flagged with that color label. Click it a second time to remove that filter option. So as you can see, uh, that works. If you have images that have two color labels assigned, you can choose both color labels and it will narrow down to just those images that have both of those color labels. Now over at the right hand side, after the gray icon, we've got this little icon which looks like a lowercase n. That is the default, and what it means is that if you choose two color labels, it will only show you images which feature both of those color labels. But we can then, once you have chosen two color labels or more, click on that icon to turn it into a U shape, 
which means it will show you images with at least one of those color labels, not only images which have both, if that makes sense. Next up, we have the search tile. And as you can see from the pop-up, uh, we can search on metadata, tags, file path, and name. You can use the percentage symbol as a wildcard character. However, by default, start and end wildcards are auto-applied. So what that means is if you've used hierarchical tags, like I do, I always, you know, with something like this, every image will be tagged Australia, and then there'll be a child tag of New South Wales, and then there'll be a child tag for the town or region that I was shooting in. So if I wanted to search for the images I shot in Burke, I could simply type in Burke without having to put the wildcard character in because by default start and end wildcards are auto applied. So what that means is that there is automatically a wildcard put at the beginning of that search, even though it doesn't appear in the text field, that matches the Australia and New South Wales portions without me having to specify it. Starting or ending with a double quote will disable the corresponding wildcard. Not sure why you would want that, but at least it's there if you want it. All right, and then there's a little X symbol if you want to clear that search term, which will take you back to your original collection. Next, we'll see that there is an X and a pin icon. Anything which has the white pin basically means these tiles for searching and filtering will always remain. If you don't want to ever use a range rating or if you ever don't want to use the color label, you can simply click on the pin to allow that tile to then be removed with the X key. So if you wanted to do that, you can. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, but you can then also, once it is no longer pinned, turn that tile on or off. So you can keep it visible, but not include it within your search. You then have a new rule button. This allows you to essentially add extra search criteria. So you might want to, you know, choose a captured date as an example, or maybe you want to look for images that you shot at a certain ISO. So we can set a minimum value of 100 and oh, let's get rid of the text that says min that should be auto selected so that you don't have to get rid of it because when you tab it auto selects the next field so let's say anything between 160 and 400 so now we can see that light gray highlight there that's showing us that that's the range of ISOs that we're currently looking at and we can see these little dots that show where we've shot images at other ISO ratings you can also left click and drag along that bar to simply select a range if you want to do that in a fairly coarse manner as you can see that's chosen 3660 up to 15726 it's rough but it does at least allow you to highlight in a very quick fashion just that iso range okay if i now want to get rid of that i can just click the x and that tile is now gone we can view the history stack to see any prior sorting and filtering that we've done. So if you suddenly want to jump back to, you know, all ISO images from 160 to 400, we can do that. And it's been reinstated and the images filtered accordingly. Then you have the sort option. Now, by default, it will sort by file name, but you can then sort by let's say rating. So I might want to search by one to three stars. And so by default, the one stars are at the top, three stars are at the bottom. We can reverse that order with this button here. Click on that. And now our one star images are at the bottom and our three star images are at the top. You can then create a new sort as well. It's a very powerful module, but one of the things that bugged Aurelium was the fact that a lot of it is duplicated up here at the top of the light table. And I do tend to agree. It's a bit redundant to have both. And given that there are 
more tools and ways to customize the search and filtering by using the module, I'd actually be in favor of removing it from the top of the light table because you've got a bit more functionality within the module than you have up here. But anyway, each to their own. So that is pretty much it for the collection filters module. I will confess I barely touch it uh, simply because I, I use collections a lot and I generally use star ratings um, to highlight the images that I'm most happy with from any given shoot. And generally for me, that's all I really need. Um, you know, but you may have reasons for, you know, wanting to sort and search your images to a much greater degree. And the collection filters module allows you to do that. Questions, comments, feedback, please sing out down below or reach out to me via any of the uh, social channels that you would have seen in the lower third earlier in the video. And uh, again, thank you to my patrons. And uh, for those who are not patrons, be aware that I create a lot of content. I probably shouldn't say a lot because I don't get to create as much as I'd like to, but I do create extra content for the patrons uh, that the freebie audience doesn't get to see. And within the patron hierarchy there's tier one two three and four uh tiers three and four get videos that even tier one and two don't get so uh, i just thought i should mention that because i i don't know that i've ever actually made it clear to you what you get by being a patron of mine so uh you will have seen the link earlier on in the video uh and i think i, I do put the patron or the patreon link in the description of the video. So if you do want to become a patron, uh, follow that link and choose a tier that suits you. Uh, that's as much as I'll say about that because I don't like pushing that too hard. It's why I don't mention it in every video, but I thought, yeah, I probably have never really explained the benefits of the different tiers. So, uh, and as for patrons on levels three and four, I've got something different in the pipeline for you guys, which hopefully I'll get recorded today, but don't hold me to that. All right, that will do it for this one. I will catch you in the next one.